Thank you, worship team. Can you hear me? Thank you, guys. So, a long time ago, I seen a gospel group that uh, did a song that was titled, God Will Turn a Test into a Testimony. I'm sure if you've been a Christian for any length of time, you've got your own, or more than one probably. So most of us grew up hearing the saying, God helps those who help themselves. So I figured if I tried to do the right thing and use the talents and gifts God had given me, then I was on the right track. Now, thankfully, everyone says, let go and let God. It takes a lot of pressure off. But it doesn't stop me from trying to control my environment most days. Even though deep down I know who is really in control. And often thank God that he is in control and that I am not. Apparently I am a type A personality. So when Bob was in a fender bender last July, I immediately went into control mode to ensure that things went the way that I thought they should go. Fortunately, no one was injured, and the car was still drivable. While waiting on the police report, I reserved a rental car and made an appointment to take the car to a Ford dealership in Greenfield, having found out that they had a collision center. After having several town cars in the past and using their service several times frequently, I felt they were trustworthy and would do the best job. When I finally got the lady's insurance information, I called them to let them know about the rental car and my appointment at Inscapes. Then they told me that it wasn't on their list of preferred centers and I needed to go to one of theirs. I told them I didn't care. That my car was like new with only 48,000 miles on it and that that was who I wanted to fix it. Three weeks later, I discovered that there's not just a car shortage, but also a parts shortage. What I didn't realize is that a dealership will only use factory parts. Sorry. And mine were obsolete. So nothing had been done to my car. So I ate some crow and called the insurance company back to find out who close by was a preferred center. When I called them, they were so busy, I had to make an appointment for August 30th. So we went to Ford, got the still wrecked car back, put it in the garage, waited a few weeks, then took it to Mueller's where it resides today. Then the insurance company said it wasn't their fault that Ford couldn't get parts and I had to give up the rental car, which would leave us without transportation. My plan was spiraling out of control. (laughs) In the midst of that chaos, Bob gets a text from someone in our church family saying, they have an extra vehicle that they want to give us. I did not see that coming. Of course I cried because who does that? You know? No one's ever given me anything like that before. We had to wait a few weeks to play that vehicle and needed to borrow a vehicle from another church member till we got them. Thank God for the blessing and promise of a church family. My head still spins when I think about it all. I could never have worked all that out by myself. Bottom line, wait on God. His ways are not our ways. And he knows the plans he has for us. Over two months later, I still don't have my car back. And I really don't care. This way, God gets the glory. Thanks, Cindy. Um, I can relate being the type A personality as well. I know when Tina's car was wrecked, I did the same type thing. So I'm just thankful that God was working ahead of me as well. 
Um, and it's funny how when we pray, when God tells us yes, we celebrate. When God tells us no, we get frumpy and grumpy. But when he tells us to wait, heaven help us all. <laughs> so yesterday, my wife threw me a surprise birthday party, and it was lots of fun. And, you know, someone gave me a card that says, well, that's 60 times around the sun. I remember that when I was younger, I couldn't wait to be 16 to get my license. I couldn't wait to go to college, and then I had to wait a year. And I couldn't wait to get married. Then I couldn't wait until our firstborn son was, was out. All these things required waiting. But in that time, I also saw God's faithfulness every step of the way and the joy that comes in waiting. So today's scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 40, and we're going to do verses 28 through 31. With verse 31 will be our memory verse. And it's funny, if you remember back in Genesis, I mean in Exodus and uh, Deuteronomy, the people are told, remind your children of these things. But in Exodus, what were they waiting for? A deliverer. And how long did they have to wait? 400 years of waiting. So when uh, Andrea brought that up about, you know, they were waiting for a deliverer. For that one who would save them. And then after God had delivered them from there, what were they waiting for again? For a savior. And to think of all the years that they've been waiting and the people were looking for him and that small group of people were declaring, he's here, he's here. But then there were so many others who didn't want to hear that message. And they had heard the message before because they grew up with it that a Messiah was coming. And not only that, but God was the ultimate source of their provision. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might he increases strength. Even youths, or as they say on some of the movies, youths, grow weary, or they shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted, but they, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Father God, we thank you for the promises of your word. Lord, that we have to be reminded of those promises. That's why we're even doing this series because these are things that we've known and, but they've been filed away so far back in our mind that we tend to gloss over them. But Lord, help us to realize just who you are in this and our need to wait upon you. And we give you praise for this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's face it. Being told to wait tends to automatically set us up for a negative attitude. We definitely don't like to wait in a drive through which I experienced this last week, half an hour in the fast food drive through And it's happening more and more around us. We don't like to have to wait in the doctor's office. And by the way, don't you find it funny that they call us the patients, especially when it tests our patients? And then we certainly don't like to wait for someone to show up 
when we said we were meeting at this time and they're late <sighs> again type a personality be in control in those cases the weight the w a i t becomes a weight w e i g h t that weighs us down causing us to be more concerned about us and how we feel and we end up missing out on what God has for us. Let me say that again. We become more concerned about how we feel and we end up missing out on what God has for us. Come on, we all know that God wants only the very best for us. I mean, come on, right? So why are we settling for something that's good or better when we can have God's best? First, did you realize that God wants to prosper you while you wait? No, this is not a name it, claim it, prosperity gospel message. This is the truth, folks. As we wait, we find strength. As we wait, we find joy. Waiting on God is a wonderful thing. For while we go through the process of faithfully and patiently waiting on God, we find blessings. When we go to a restaurant, what do you call the person who comes to your table? A waiter. He takes your order, or he or she, takes your waiter or takes your orders and brings your food to you. Now some places call it waiter and some places call her call them servers. But both are taking care of all your needs at their station. They are expected to serve you promptly and make sure that you have no needs because they've already seen that your drink is down this far. Or they already ask ahead of time that you're going to need salt and pepper and, you know, maybe A1 if you have a steak. And so during your visit, that person is representing the whole restaurant to you. Funny thing is, many times we treat God as our waiter. And we demand that he meets our wants and needs immediately. Sorry, folks. We got that backwards. Yes, he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory, but we know that he asked us to love him. And so it's no longer what I want with a demanding fist, but it's, God, what do you want for me? What do you have for me in my life? We heard a few weeks ago that we are to serve one another in love, that the world will know that we are Christians by our love that we have for one another and how we serve one another. And that we are doing everything for the glory of the one who we serve. And who is that? God. For God's glory. Everything you do. The way you raise your child for the glory of God. The way you uh, check out the, at the at Kroger. Do you know that people are watching you? If you're, you know, if the cashier's having a rough day and the machine's not scanning as fast as what it should be, is it her fault? But we see so many people that take it out on them. We need to be doing everything for the glory of God. The way you drive on the road. The way that you do your job is for the glory of God. Rather than being impulsive in our actions, we need to learn to be mindful of what God is leading us to do. Love comes first in all of these. Love comes first. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. <clears throat> love is patient and kind love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude 
Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable, and it keeps no record of when it was wronged. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. So, love has to be the center of everything that we do. We are to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And what's the other one? Love our neighbor as ourselves. Sometimes, part of the problem is we don't see ourselves as God sees us, and we, so we don't love ourselves. So how can we love our neighbors? We have to be mindful of what love is. Love is patient and kind. Love rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and never ends. And love does not, or is not, love does not envy or boast, puff itself up, is not arrogant or rude, is not insistent on its own way, is not irritable and resentful, and does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Hmm, they got what they deserve, yeah. No, that's not love. When I think of all these things that love is, I get slapped in the face myself. Being that type A, that person who's always in control, it's easy to get upset when things don't go the way I think they should have. And then you add in, okay, they're not doing things at the school the way they should be. They're not doing the things in our state as they should be. They're not doing the things in our government as they should be. And we get all so riled up about it that we forget to pray. So if you are doing everything in love, you will pray for our leadership no matter what, whether local, state, or national. Second, you're supposed to love those who spitefully use you. Ouch! I'll never do that for them again. Never say never. Because if we are loving God with all of those things, that when we are told to wait, knowing that he will deliver, he will provide, he will be the source. Hmm. That's when we see the blessings. And that's when we see the answers coming forth. That's why it says in our memory verse for today, they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Growing up in church, there was a song that was exactly these words. And I, it's one of those that has helped me to memorize so many verses is through song. But it was simple. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. You know, <laughs> have you been on YouTube lately? And they have these videos of these parents who are being mean to their children by placing a candy dish in front of them and says, don't eat any till I get back. And they leave the room, but they leave the videotape going on the kid. You need to watch some of those. One little girl I saw was like, okay, daddy, I'll do that. I'll just count them. One, two, 
three. And then she puts them back in, stirs them around a little bit, and the timer's going over here. Daddy, where are you? I'll be there in a minute. Just wait. Don't eat any. Okay. So she starts t- shaking the dish around. And she doesn't eat any. And he comes back. And it's on video, so she didn't eat any. Then he brought in her little sister. The dad didn't even make it out of the room. She had those things going in her mouth so fast. And it was my favorite, M&M's. I mean, come on. And you can't eat just one. But when we find ourselves doing things on our own strength, we will run out of gas sooner than later. In the previous verse, Isaiah 40, 30, it, we are reminded that even the youth will grow tired. Now, how many of us have watched little kids running around and said, I wish I could bottle up some of that energy? I saw it yesterday with my grandkids at the birthday party. One, they had a bowl full of M&Ms in front of them. And two, there was no shot stopping the sugar effect. And then it says that the youth will eventually fail. And how many have heard this statement? When you're talking to someone younger than you and you say, enjoy it while you're still young. (laughs) And now that I hit the big 6-0, yep. (laughs) Because that is one of the things that when we do things on our own strength, we do run out of gas. But I remember times that the Lord provided strength for me when I was on a missions trip. And everyone else got to go over here and build something on the the church, working inside. Mine and Colby's job, no, mine and Caleb's job was digging sand and moving it from point A to point B because they needed to have build a staircase going down into the basement of the church and they it was on an island um, in just outside of Hung, uh, Budapest, Hungary and so it, it's all sand so they couldn't they had to put that foundation in first before they could even dig away from it and do anything else and how many days John did we work there? Five days moving that sand? And on the fifth day, we got to see those guys pour the steps to, their, to have basement access. So we got to see the reward, but we had to wait to see the accomplishment till all that sand was done. Now, sometimes we have to put in a little bit of work during the time that we don't sit still. But in this case, we're being told to sit still and wait. And how many of you are like me and have a trouble sitting still? You know, we know that God is the one that is the source of our strength. He is the everlasting source. He never grows tired. He never grows weary. He gives us power, you know, even when we're, even when we're struggling and, and we're weak. And it's not just a one-time thing. Last week, we were, my, we were all reminded to fully trust and obey God. So if he tells you to wait, what are you supposed to do? Wait. And while you're waiting, you're demonstrating your obedience, right? And you're also demonstrating your faith and hope that God will come through with the answer. In the waiting, he wants to recharge you and rejuvenate you. And waiting sometimes requires us to wait, to rest, to stay put, don't move, to cease from work. And that is so hard. How many of you know that with your cell phone, when the battery gets down low and you plug it in to charge it, you can't just go into this outlet 
and in five minutes move it over and then plug it into another one and then if I, and expect it to have the power and last for a long time because what every time you don't let it fully charge you do damage to the battery how many of us have done damage to our batteries because we haven't fully weighted and fully recharged Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come on, Ken. Pastor Jerry did a whole sermon series on that. Exactly. But how many of you are practicing it? How many of you have laid everything at his feet? How many of you have taken that time to rest? You know, it's easy to listen, but hard to put in practice. And that is why the Lord brought me back to this verse to put back in front of us. There is a benefit in waiting. Not only do you get to rest, but you get to dump off all that heavy stuff that's causing you to grow tired. Isn't it wonderful when you have a friend or a family member who will come over and help you move heavy objects? Even though if you're like me, you automatically think, ah, I can do it by myself. Or you've tried and asked someone before and they're always busy and so you just say, well, I'll just do it myself. Bad, bad thing. But all too often, when we think we can get it done by ourselves, that may have been true when we were younger, but not so much anymore. The body here reminds us just how much we may have abused it and when we should have been asking for help all along. Now, I'm a living testimony of that right now because tomorrow I go to see an orthopedic doctor because I did something to my knee. My good friend Donnie Blevins had some fill dirt that he was... Uh, I, bought, I got from him, bought from him. He brought me over five dump truck fulls, loads, okay? Because I had a barn built and I needed to slope away from where the, uh, the garage was now sitting. And Pastor Jerry was in the middle of doing his project with his father and had all this free sod that I could have to put around that building to at least get a head start on my grass. So... Being who I am, I had a friend, Chris Logan, who lives a mile and a half away from me. I borrowed his tractor, and I hadn't driven this tractor a lot, so I didn't know all the nuances of it, but I got most of the dirt down, and then didn't want to bother anybody else because I could get this done. So here I am with a rake and a shovel moving this dirt and getting it leveled off. What is the motion for raking? You plant this leg, you lean forward and you're back and forth and back and forth. Doing a shovel, you scoop. I'm right-handed, right-footed. I did everything with this leg. This leg is now screaming at me because I strained the upper quad muscle. Could I have saved myself some pain? Yeah. Have I learned my lesson? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> because I went to the doctor and she said, it's not swollen, just ice it and keep it above your heart. <laughs> Knee above the heart. Can't do that sitting at a desk. So I'd have to, you know, I, I'm not one to lay down and be still. So I wrapped it up, braced it up, lots of, been gay and icy hot and all that kind of stuff and so a week later hey starting to feel pretty good so what did I do more dirt 
except I just stood still. I didn't plant the leg. I just did all my upper body. It still affects it, folks. And so now I'm hobbling around, and my wife says, you got to go to the doctor. All because of what? I didn't wait and rest like the doctor said. Sometimes God has to knock us on our backsides to get our attention. I mean, come on. Even with Saul, he knocked him off his donkey. And it ta- he had to wait three days for his answer. Patience and waiting is not one of my virtues. I'll be honest. But I'm getting better at it. Because I find there's more joy and happiness and peace and strength in the waiting than in just getting the task done. We need to wait upon the Lord with expectation. Just like a mother waiting for a child to be born. That anticipation and excitement. Waiting on the Lord is the best thing that we can do when faced with life uncertainties. It's not the same as waiting on man-made promises because how many of you have had people fail you? Because we will be disappointed by man, but God is always faithful. And he is a God of his promise. He will always do what he says, and he wants us to do that with expectancy. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is an assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. There's hope there. There's faith that is going to happen. And God promises that he will do it. When we choose to wait, we're assured that what we are waiting for will come to pass. Hope is when we truly trust in God. While we may not see it visibly, God is at work working all things together for our good. Our faith in God is demonstrated as we cooperate and depend upon him, waiting for his timing and letting him do things according to his plan and his will. Too many times we do something and then ask God to bless it. In reality, we need to first talk with God, ask him what he would have us to do and lead us, and then see him bless it we'll find that God will strengthen us in the waiting and make us grow according to his plan. Yes. We may be waiting for an answer to a prayer or for a renewed strength or even a spiritual healing. But the question is, how are you waiting? Are you waiting patiently in his presence to hear his voice? Or are you growing impatient and trying to do things on your own like a hungry, angry person? They have a new word for that. Did you know that? Hangry. <laughs> hungry and angry. Don't get in front of someone in line at, the, at Burger King or any place else that they might be in that condition. <laughs> we need to... Um, Rest in the waiting. We are told to wait on the Lord. So there's this old word that they used to use in the King James that says, Terry. And that means to linger. So even if you're not one to sit still, you can still linger. You can walk around, be in his presence to talk with him. You know, again, back to the song that um, Andrea sang, we fall on our knees. You can't run away if you're on your knees. Or you're a very talented person if you can. But it brings us to that place where we have to wait. 
But also when we're on our knees, it's a sign of surrender. We're bowing before the king. So as we tarry in his presence and we serve the Lord, that is how we wait before him. And think about it. Do you realize right now that all of us together are waiting on something? Christ's return. We are waiting for that day. And sometimes we pray, Lord, can it be today, please? But he promised that he would return someday to take us home to a place that he has prepared. Another promise. So while we are waiting, how are we doing this? Are we spending daily time with God? When we come and gather together here in the church, are we encouraging other, one another with our testimonies and even in our worship with song? And finally, are we giving God time to be able to talk to us in response to a worship service like this that included the message and songs? Because sometimes a song will speak to someone faster than all the words that I've just told you. That's why here, if there's a song that just, boom, hits you right in the heart and just, you need to come and respond, please do so. There is a, this is a no judgment zone here, folks. Because all of us are sinners saved by grace. And so because of that, if you just... That a song hits you, you come down. If in the middle of a message, a verse, a comment was just made, and you need prayer, come down. But my other thing is also that as we wrap up a service like this, don't be looking at your watch going, yep, we can still beat the Assembly of God to the uh, restaurants. <laughs> because in reality, we have one service a week with you. But you have a bunch of people that love you. They'll be here to pray with you and support you. Don't run out of here if you have a need, ever. But that's one of the reasons I kept this short today, because I want to give you time. Even with Cindy's testimony, which I hope touched your heart, together we have talked less than 30 minutes. And so I want you to know, I grew up in a church where there was always a call to the altar from the pastor. There was always certain songs that were sung, just as I am. You know, the old rugged cross. Those were always ones that were played and people would say, oh, you're just trying to pull at my emotional heartstrings. Yep. <laughs> because guess what? I'm an emotional being. But not only that, I remember my pastor praying, and he'd be up here praying, and just and they'd be singing the song, and he'd just tell the tell the vocalist to stop for a second. I just I just feel like there's somebody here that has this going on in their life, and I mean it would be spot on. And that person would come down and be prayed for, and and they they come back up and say, "Did someone tell you?" I know Pastor Jerry's been accused of reading someone's email. But guys, this place is for you. It's always a time that we knew that God was there. He was the one calling. He was the one wooing. He was the one inviting. And the Holy Spirit was here, is here right now to meet you right where you're at in those needs. God is waiting on his children and wanting them to know how much he loves them and he is wanting us to spend some time with him. That same God is here today and wants us to spend some time with him. So as, a, as Cindy and Natasha come up for this last song, it's a simple song. But I want you to listen to the words and you'll be able to eventually pick up on it and sing it with her. 
but the words are ring true that he will meet you right here where you are. He doesn't say change first, then come to me. He wants you here right now. It's really funny that Pastor Ken um, had this talking because this week um, it's been a little hard. Um, if you know our family, we're busy. And I found myself really struggling um, just to keep up with everything. Um, and I needed something to strengthen me. And then when this, our praise and worship team had emailed and Brandon sent a message out saying, will somebody please lead this? And I thought, okay, God, I'm listening, right? Have you ever had a moment where you're in the moment and God is like pushing you and pushing you and pushing you and you're like, nope, I'm just gonna ignore it. How's that go for you? Doesn't really go well for me. And so that's what God was doing this week was pushing me through everything that was going on. So I would encourage you, this is a very simple song. The stairs are open. Pastor Jerry and Pastor Ken are down here to pray with you. Um, but listen to the words. It's very simple. But God is here, and he just wants us to rest and be still. Be still and know that he is God. Come on, let's wait. Sorry. Upon the Lord, he will upon the Lord come on let's wait upon the Lord he will our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he will renew our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he will renew our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he will renew our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he will renew our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he renew our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he will renew our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he will renew our strength if we just wait upon the Lord he will renew our strength God we just wait upon the Lord he will renew strength God I thank you so much right now I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us God I pray for this congregation and I pray for any individual in here that just needs you to draw closer to them God we live in a world that is broken and we know that but you give us the strength every day to go out into it and to serve 
and to love and to do what you called us to do. I pray that you would help us as we come to those moments where we're too, maybe we're too scared. Maybe we're too scared to go up and say something. But God, I get, ask you to give us the strength this week as we go into the world and be the light that those need to see. God, thank you so much. Would you please stand with me as we close and sing it one more time together? Come on, let's wait upon the Lord. He will renew our strength. If we just wait upon the Lord, He will renew our strength. I um, challenge you this week, if you have uh, Apple Music or um, Spotify or just want to go on YouTube, type in the word promises of God because sometimes we forget. It's not just the waiting. Waiting is one of them. But the promises of God are many and they are yes and amen. And there are songs out there to encourage you. And they've got everything on there from, from Elevation Music, or Elevation Worship and um, Maverick City to the Martins. So whether you're Southern Gospel or you're more contemporary, there's a song there for you that will speak to your heart. And I, just like this song is very repetitive, very simple, but that's one of those songs you have to put on repeat before it'll finally penetrate and get through these thick skulls that we have. And it buries itself deep in our hearts. So if there's a song that you wanna get stuck in your head better than baby sharks or anything like that, let it be this one. Put that song on repeat in your head. And let it be that, that what they call, a, you know, what is it, a worm song or something like that, worm, that earworm, thank you. And that it just gets in there and you just can't get it out. Because God has something special for each and every one of us. But we have to wait on Him. So Father, as we wrap up this service today, may this message be buried deep in our hearts and be, we be reminded of it all week long. For Lord, I know that it's in the waiting that we find joy. It's in the waiting that we find that renewed strength. And we get rid of so much by casting all those cares upon you and we get to serve you in love and we give you thanks for that now in Jesus name Amen Amen. God bless, see you on Wednesday Come on let's wait upon the Lord